Hey y'all, and welcome back to Bourbon and Bones. So first off, I want to say I'm very sorry for the real hit and miss nature of the last few videos, or really just the absence of the last few weeks of videos. It's physics and calculus's fault. So ultimately it's Sir Isaac Newton's fault, and so since his birthday is coming up next week, we all hate him. I hate him personally, deep down, and if you were if you weren't dead, I'd probably smack him. But Again, I'm very sorry. Calculus and physics has taken over so much of my life recently. And as much as I've been wanting to do videos, it's, it was finals. I'm sorry, I tried. Anyway, so welcome back to Rabbit of Bones. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. And if you're one of our faithful followers, welcome back. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. So if you like what we're doing here, uh, like, follow, share, and subscribe, like us on Facebook, all that stuff. If you haven't noticed, the decoration and the music everywhere, it's the holidays. A big question I get a lot is, what should I get a bourbon drinker or a whiskey drinker? As one for many years, I have gotten a whole variety of gadgets and gizmos over the years and things like glassware, which have been great, and then some things that were not so great, like little plastic yellow submarines that you freeze so it doesn't make your whiskey watered down, it's supposed to make it cold, but really just makes it taste like plastic. And so you have all these great gifts, you have terrible gift ideas, and, and like everybody I've ever talked to really doesn't like the Whiskey Stones much, actually really at all. I don't know anybody that does. If you do, awesome, that's great. I'm not judging it, more just saying, I don't know anyone who likes them. They're just kind of like, it's a, it's a rock to hit me in the teeth. And yeah, don't buy those for people, unless you know they actually like them. Uh, go for glassware, get a nice set of Glen Cairns or something. And that, what we're gonna do is actually talk about other options, things that may not be just glassware or other accoutrement for bourbon drinkers. I guess the big thing right now is if you really wanted to get a bourbon drinker, something really, really rare or hard to find, like a hard to find bottle, you're too late. So sorry. Like, you should have started that back in January with lots of hope and lots of time and lots of money set aside for the hunt. And the hunt is fun. It's a great part of bourbon, but you're a week away. Like, you're gonna have to pay secondary prices if you don't want to, I don't want you to. So we are gonna look at something that might be a great idea for you. Tonight, we're gonna look at store selects. So these are two store selects of Buffalo Trace and a regular bottle of Buffalo Trace. And I hear you ask the question, what is a store select? Well. You can buy this bottle of bourbon pretty much anywhere in the world. You can, it's always gonna taste the same. It's always pretty, uh, it's a great bottle, but it's just always going to be the similar profile you're used to. We have two other selects here. So what these are is that Buffalo Trace sends a company a sample of bourbon and they choose the best version or something spicier, something sweeter, something different, something unique that allows this bottle to be different than the normal stuff. Granted, it's going to be slightly different, which is sometimes a really neat thing. So if you know someone that likes, in this case, really likes Buffalo Trace, a single barrel store select might be a really good option for you because it's going to be something that they know and like, but it's gonna be different enough that they get to explore it. And since it's a single barrel store select, it is from one barrel, and there's a finite number of them. So every time they try one, even if it's from the same store, it's always gonna be a little bit different. So what are the differences? Well, let's take a look. Here we have a normal bottle of Buffalo Trace, like I said before, a single bottle from Total Wine and More here in Arizona, and from AJ's Fine Food, which is a pretty high-end grocery store. Both uh, were chosen by their um, head selectors, and I picked them up for, I think, $5 more than the regular price. So I think $25 and like $30, $35. So it, it's, it's usually not outrageous for what you're paying for. So I guess the big question is, how do they taste? All right, so right away, we're just gonna start with the classic, just the normal Buffalo Trace. Sweet caramel, a little bit of an, uh, an apple note. 
a little bit of dark fruit. Nice burst of vanilla, good corn, nice caramel. It's just a nice, kind of on the sweeter end, good bourbon. A little bit of black pepper to kind of balance it out. So we're gonna look at the AJ's fine food next. So on the nose is a lot more subdued. It actually almost smells like it's a lower proof. Because you're getting a lot more brown sugars. brown sugar, a little bit of caramel. On the palate, it's actually really fruity. You get a lot of like cherries, a little bit of like this green appleiness. Almost a butterscotch. It's actually, a, it's actually somehow more sweet than the regular, but I think it's it's really different though, and that's the that's the whole point of this episode. It's something different, and I like it. I like it as a nice change. For me, I think it's a little oversweet personally, but I would put this in like a mint julep. It'd be fantastic. It's just uh, yeah, a touch sweet, but a really nice change of pace. All right, so next is the Total Wine and More. Now this one smells actually almost a higher fruit than the original. A little bit of butterscotch. Char, maybe, a little smoke. Definitely a lot more char, smoke, bold baking spices, a lot more cinnamon. Definitely has that butterscotch kind of leather effect. It tastes a lot older than the other two. And I think that's just the difference in a single barrel. It's just these are really great representations of two different ends of a spectrum of something that's actually a pretty standard bourbon that a lot of people have had. Yeah, so I mean, so for the verdict real fast, uh, this one's my favorite. I just like the fact it tastes a little bit more mature, a little bit more earthy, oaky. I don't know, just digs, I dig it better, that's all. But everyone's a little different, everyone's palate's different. That's the fun part of a single. Single barrel store selects are an amazing way for people to explore a new way to try their favorite bourbons. So many people love this bourbon and having a barrel pick is a new way of appreciating. Now, most companies allow places uh, to try and select a variety of bottle options, like all of these right here. So all these bottles are store selects and they are offered Pretty much everywhere. I found some at grocery stores, some at liquor stores, some at I think some through like community groups on Facebook that, that actually do store selects. Even things like some highly sought after stuff like Weller products and, and Blanton's. All of these are great options to explore different things. And because the holidays are upon us right now, bourbon drinkers are always looking for something different and neat. These are a great option for you. So for our final, and I suppose only transition this evening, is we're gonna look at an extinct marine reptile, the Mosasaur. Mosasaur, meaning Muse Lizard. And Muse is actually a river in France, and if that's not correct, I'm sorry, I don't speak French. I learned German, and it doesn't look like a German word either. So, here's big river, and uh, means Muse Lizard. So Mosasaurs are actually now part of an extinct 
line of marine reptiles that currently contain over 40 different genera, spanning 35 million years. To give you an idea, humanity as we understand ourselves to be is only like 200,000 years old. So even though Mosasaurs only lived in the late Cretaceous, they still lived a really long time. Now these were apex predators in the late Cretaceous, and they were massive, averaging four to 17 meters in length. The first Mosasaur was discovered in 1764 in a limestone quarry in Mount St. Peter in Holland. And as you can see here, this tooth is actually really conical shaped. This is the best for snacking on fish and other soft bodied swimming reptiles. And like I said before, these guys were apex predators in their ecosystems. Interestingly though, mosasaurs are most closely related to lizards than anything else today, like the little geckos that you see running around. And also they, are, they were not dinosaurs. They are actually two very different species, no, not species, two very different families in the animal kingdom. Now, one big question paleontologist asks is, how did they give birth? And like, you kind of think like, that's a weird question to ask, but like, because paleontologists are always looking so far in the past, we don't know a whole lot of things. And so we have to take a lot of educated guesses and then try to find evidence to support our guess or to reject our guess. And so we thought for a long time that Mosasaurs actually gave live birth like sharks do. Sharks aren't mammals, but they give life birth in the water. And so we kind of thought that perhaps Mosasaurus did that as well. Until 2020. Because why not? So looking at this image of a Mosasaur, it is difficult to imagine that it laid eggs like turtles do. Because of the large tail, even though it had four very powerful webbed feet, flippers, um, and it could have gotten possibly have gotten on land. It was an air breather. So that was a possibility of something that some paleontologists have, paleontologists have thought about. But until 2020, there was no evidence to this. And of course, 2020 being what it is, all of a sudden a clutch of eggs were discovered in, Antar in Antarctica. And it, it's a very large nest with very large reptile eggs. Now dinosaur eggs were actually hard eggs, kind of like chicken eggs or ostrich eggs, hard shelled. Reptile eggs are soft and squishy uh, because they actually bring in moisture from the outside. And that is what snake eggs are and modern day reptile eggs are. And one big indication that this was a very large reptile that gave, that laid these eggs, was the fact that they were large eggs. They were huge. They were they were large eggs, and so they could only be laid by a large reptile. The only large reptile ever been discovered in that area is a mosasaur. So perhaps they actually did lay eggs and did not give a live birth. This is groundbreaking news for mosasaur research. Now, granted, this is still in the research phase. Like this is one indication, this is one hypothesis and possible theory that have developed out of this research. Plenty more to do. So, I just thought it was fascinating. I just wanted you to know that. It's one of the most interesting things I've read in the journal Nature in a while. So tonight we dove into the waters of the late Cretaceous and into the possibly unknown waters of single barrel store selects. If you like what we're doing here, please uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe us. Join us on Facebook. Please forgive me for the absence of content recently. Again, I'm very sorry. I will try to do better in the future. And happy holidays. Share a burden with someone. Good night.